hi guys are here welcome back to my channel yet another exciting episode so today i want to tell you about the cost of living in uganda 2023 i'm going to break down this video into four different sections one is going to be accommodation two is going to be about food three is going to be about household items and four is going to be about transport so i'm going to put for you guys chapters i don't know if you guys know youtube chapters but you can easily skip and click the part that you want so subscribe a like share i'm super excited it's a beautiful a beautiful afternoon yeah uh let's dive right into the video begin with accommodation i'm going to show you a typical kampala neighborhood and since i'm coming from you know i'm just going to show you my neighborhood and how it looks like so we have a different apartment blocks in this neighborhood there is that right there those are two there is another one up there there are two more up there and then there is uh, this one right here so this is a typical kampala neighborhood it's neither like a rich you know posh posh area that is super expensive neither is it a slummy area most neighborhoods in kampala are going to look like this with these apartment blocks where you can just rent out so what you have to note is that apartment blocks could either be furnished or not furnished this for example is mainly unfurnished meaning it is for long-term stay if you want to rent out but there are some that are also furnished which do short-term stay and maybe mid short-term stay or uh, whatever you might want to call it so talking about the prices what you have to note is that i'm going to give you a range because the price will depend on the location so we are taking this kind of neighborhood as an example neither too expensive high end like kololo neither is it a slummy area where you wouldn't want to live <laughs> it's like a normal regular you know uh neighborhood so the price could range anywhere from like 110 dollars a month to up to like 300 dollars a month for a non-furnished apartment it could either be a two bedroom it could either be a one bedroom 110 dollars and then to like three bedroom 300 dollars a month so what you have to note that is that when you're renting out a place well, number one is the security you want to find a place that has a gate you can see all these apartments have gates and you can see this is my own apartment where i stay we have a gate so that is the number one thing to note security is very very important when there is a gate there is also a security guard who's always there day and night and then second is parking so this is our parking space accommodates up to like seven cars so what you have to know is that apartments that are furnished are going to range from anywhere from $30 per day they usually charge them per day because it's short-term stay so anywhere i mean it could go up to like 200 dollars once again depending on the location and depending on how beautiful the place looks like but the minimum you can get is 30 dollars a day especially in such a neighborhood that i've showed you guys neither high-end area neither a slum area just a normal neighborhood that is safe and secure where you can easily live so i know you guys are going to have questions and i'm going to recommend for you guys two agents property agents or real estate agents in Kampala to help you out with rentals or Airbnb so that if you ever want to come to Kampala and you're looking for an Airbnb you can just reach out to them one is called Shita Properties another one is called Cubs Properties I know them personally I've worked with them personally so I'm going to put their numbers and their socials in the link in the description you can always reach out to them if you want to get a furnished apartment even if it's a non-furnished apartment so check them out ask them all the questions yeah uh, that is pretty much it about accommodation so right now let's go over the market and talk about food so the other thing i wanted to show you is that we do actually have a clinic in my neighborhood uh, right here uh, it's called uh, fairmont so uh, that's a bonus because <laughs> i know most neighborhoods won't have a clinic i just wanted to show you guys but obviously i never wish to find myself there and i've never been there so i'm good for that so this is another part of the neighborhood i'm just walking towards the main road uh, this is how it looks like what you have to note is that usually the distance from home to the main road is very very short meaning you can easily walk from the place that you're living at to go and find maybe like means of transport to connect to the city centers we do have some shops like some small shops uh, that lady in that corner sells food so sometimes i buy food from her there is a place here to buy chicken 
then there is uh, this building where there is a saloon uh, sometimes I use that saloon there is a veterinary shop so this is how a typical neighborhood is going to look like and then this is the main road here so when you're looking out for a place to go into when you're coming to Kampala for the first time look out for somewhere that is not far from the main road you know either a walkable distance if it's not a walkable distance make sure that you can pay maybe like 1000 shillings on a border to get you to the main road that is very very important so let's go to the market right now and talk about the cost of food uh, but let me know guys what you think so far if this is very helpful about accommodation because i always get this question to in my inbox hey ray i'm coming to kampala how can i get help so let me know if it's helpful so far be sure to drop a comment in the comment section is a very very close this is still my neighborhood by the way it's a very walkable distance sometimes i walk from the home to the market especially the evening to take a walk so that you know get my blood moving so we are going to enter the market talk to some vendors and get to know about the prices of food and bear in mind that this is fresh food we don't usually keep food in the fridge in kampala unless it's really necessary but you can always get fresh food from the market and i always get those questions can we get fresh fruits and vegetables in the market are they expensive are they cheap so today we're going to get to know about all those things uh, so guys let's start with a protein and i'm here with some two gentlemen uh, they are selling fresh fish remember we do have lake victoria so we know from lake victoria lake victoria yeah. so all the fish comes from lake victoria so here is 20,000 shillings, here is 25,000 shillings per piece, and then here is 30,000 shillings per piece. So this is fresh fish from the lake, guys. It is very, very fresh and very, very big. So this is two kilograms. Eh? So two kilograms of fish are 25,000. You know, it's one kilogram and a half, and then. This is two and a half kilograms, guys. So this is the price of fish in the market. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, obviously, we are starting with a protein. So do you think this is affordable? Is it expensive? I think it's a good price, but this is fresh fish from Lake Victoria. So let me know what you guys think so far. So here, we have something called a Nile patch. Nile patch is a very very big size of fish in that they cut it in kilos they can't sell it as one so one kilo is 20,000 so one kilo of Nile patch you can see how fresh it is this is 20,000 shillings so guys I also want to show you the prices of fresh of, of dry fish we do have fresh fish but also have a dry fish as well. These ones on this side, they are 30,000 shillings. This is 30,000. They arrange them according to prices. These ones right here, these ones are 28,000, this line here. And then these ones on top are 25,000. Those are 25,000. And then these ones right here are 20,000, yeah. Chua, right now you have an idea of the prices of fish when you come to the market. They range from 20,000 shillings up to 30,000 shillings for two kilograms and a half of fish. So, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think so far. Do you guys have fresh fish where you are? Do you guys have dry fish where you are? Drop a comment and let me know what you guys think. So, let's continue and i show you the prices of more other foods. Uh, so, guys, I'm going to show you beef. But what you have to note is two interesting things. One is that a Muslim person is the one to cut the beef. Any beef that is sold in a market or in Kampala, it has to be cut by a Muslim. Because remember that when a Muslim doesn't cut the meat, the Muslim people can't buy it, a Muslim community. So as mandatory, that's what they go by it. Secondly, the meat has to be stamped and approved. So right now I'm at a butcher where they sell beef and I'm going to show you so this is the beef guys uh, you can see it has a lot of fat it's quite fresh and to know that the beef is approved it has a stamp i don't know if you guys can see that but that is actually a stamp 
sure that this meat was approved and the meat is healthy. So when you're buying meat from the market, you shouldn't fear that the meat is unhealthy because all meat has to be approved. They all have to have a license before they sell it. And if you are a Muslim, you shouldn't fear either because all the cows, all the animals are cut by a Muslim when they are at the abattoir. So that's what you have to take note. And a kilogram of meat is 15,000 shillings, yeah. A kilogram of beef is 15,000 shillings. That's what they're going to charge you. And this is the weighing scale where they're going to weigh it from. So once you come to the market, you can buy as much beef as you want. Go home and enjoy yourself, you know. So I want to show you option number two. When you come to a market, there are always very many different butchers. You can check them out and see which meat you like that looks the most interesting one. So I uh, hear they actually do sell offers. I let you know if you guys eat offers, but these are offers. A kilo goes for 10,000 shillings, a kilo of offers. And they also have beef. So this is beef guys, tell me if this beef looks nice and fresh. A kilo goes for 16,000 shillings, a kilo of beef. And then here we have goat's meat. This is goat's meat. So in Uganda, goat's meat is more expensive than beef and a kilo of goat's meat goes for 20,000 shillings, a kilo of goat's meat. Uh, those are the prices of meat in the market. I let me know. So next we have to check out the price of chicken. So guys, uh, this is the place where they sell chickens. This is still inside the market. Some people are playing. They also sell charcoal because in Uganda we use a lot of charcoal to cook. Here guys, you can buy a chicken and they cut it for you. You choose the one that you want and then they cut it for you. So I know what glue is there, 25,000. 101 seeds, Vela 18,000. 101 seeds, these are layers, 25,000. These are croilers, also known as crossbreeds. They range from 28,000 to 35,000. Once again, depending on the size of the, of the bird that you pick. So when you come here, you pick your own bird and they cut it for you and you take it home, you know? So guys, I know some of you might be scared to see those live chickens or those live hens, but when you come to the market, don't be afraid to ask where they sell the hens that are already cut. Because <laughs> I know some of you guys can't bear the sight of picking out the hen and then they cut it. You just want the one that is already cut. So those places are there as well. So for example, we do have this store here where they're selling the chickens that are already cut and here they will sell in kilograms so you see they have this weighing scale so here a kilogram goes for 15,000 shillings so this for example you can see it's a very very big piece this will probably be more than a kilogram but kilogram 15,000 shillings and then when you want a full one the way you see this uh, very nice and full. If you want to take the whole of it at home, it will be 48,000 shillings. That is the price of chicken, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you think it's expensive? Do you think it's affordable? I'll leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. So I found here two beautiful ladies who are selling green. But they are a little bit camera shy. But uh, let me show you the prices. Eh? So when we start from here, all these greens don't look the same, by the way. Uh, this is called gobe. Uh, this is called gobe, guys. Look at this. Very fresh. Uh, they picked it today morning. Very, very fresh. So they're selling 1,000 shillings per bundle. Every bundle is 1,000 shillings. This is called nakati. This is called nakati. They always use this in restaurants when preparing food. Uh, it is very very healthy very very fresh and uh, this is also 1000 shillings per bundle and then when you come over here this is spinach so let me show you guys eh? this is spinach fresh spinach guys 1000 shillings per bundle as well and then this is dodo uh, i know most people know what dodo is but uh, uh, this is dodo guys eh? Dodo, very very nice when you accompany it with local food also 1000 shillings per, per bundle so you see that actually fresh greens are very very affordable in Uganda I still want to show you more varieties of vegetables that you can get in the market look at this this is called buga 
it has a very unique color you can tell this is also 1000 shillings per bundle and then this is still dodo we've already seen dodo but then right here uh, there is irish potatoes so i'm going to show you the price they may all look the same but actually the sizes are different eh? so you see this small size this is 5000 shillings this is quite a small size and then this size is 20,000 shillings. This is quite big, you can tell. And then there is another size here for 10,000 shillings. Eh? So the sizes are different, hence the prices are different. So yeah, let's continue the tour. I keep showing you guys. I let me know what you think so far, but this is the kind of guys. I'm going to show you the prices of sweet potatoes, cassava, and bananas. Things that you can use to eat your protein. So these are carbs. So here we do have sweet potatoes and uh, these are really really nice and fresh from the garden. So here they sell them 5,000 each. You can see how they make them to be 5,000 per, we call it mufungo. I don't know the right English word. <laughs> yeah, but per measurement 5,000 shillings. And then this is cassava. I'm sure you guys know cassava. Cassava is 7,000 shillings. Yeah, and then Guys, these are yams. Eh? I don't know if you guys have yams. I know they have yams in West Africa. We also have yams in Uganda. This is a yam, guys. Eh? Let me know if you guys have ever eaten yams. But uh, so yams, they start, they sell at five thousand and ten thousand shillings. Eh? So these could go for ten thousand shillings. Uh, they are four pieces, and then the smaller pieces are right here would go for five thousand shillings. And then we have matoke right over here. A cluster like this one will go for 7,000 shillings. Because matoke price depends on the size of the... It depends on the size and how healthy they look. Eh? So here they could do for you three of these at 1,000 shillings. Because they look are very, very nice and very, very healthy. You guys can tell. And then here they could do a whole bunch for you at 7,000 shillings. So. Yeah, that is the price of carbohydrates, guys, because when you are eating in Uganda, you combine the protein and the carbs. Yeah, that's how we do it. So I'll leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think so far. When you're buying matoke, you have an option to buy either pieces, just one finger, or a full bunch of matoke. So this one right here, for example, a full one goes for 50,000 shillings. Uh, this one right here, 50,000 shillings. And then this one right here goes for 40,000 shillings. Yeah. Like this one is 50,000 shillings. Yeah, so the range is from 40,000 shillings to 50,000 shillings. But remember that you can always negotiate and pick which bunch of matoke that you like to take at home and cook. What you have to note is that when you come to the market, you also do have an option to negotiate. So don't be scared of the prices. Just talk to the ladies and be like, you know, I have this reduced for me. So you can always negotiate as well. So we are going to talk about uh, more vegetables and right over here they do have very nice fresh tomatoes So bear in mind that these sizes are different by the way this goes for 15,000 shillings This goes for 10,000 shillings and then this smaller one goes for 5,000 shillings So you can see they look really really healthy and the healthier they look the more price right here We do have carrots so each of these is going to cost 2,000 shillings. They are four inside. And then we also do have eggplants. I don't know if you guys know eggplants, but these are eggplants. They are white in color. There are actually different types of eggplants. This is the white one, and then this is the green one. So these are slightly bitter, and then these are not bitter at all. And then we also have these ones. These small ones, we call it katunkuma. So these are really good when people have like diabetes or they are somewhat sick. So you can get all these in the market. Are these 2,000 as well? And these ones are 1,000. So these ones are 1,000, 2,000 shillings, uh, 2,000 shillings as well. And then we also do have French beans here. They are for 2,000 shillings. Eh? These are eggplants, another type of eggplants. We call it biringanya. I don't know the English name. <laughs> 
Then we also have cucumbers uh, right here. And then we also have uh, lemons, we also have oranges. So you can get three lemons at 1,000 shillings. You can get three passion fruits, these are passion fruits, at 1,000 shillings as well. You can get three of these at 1,000 shillings as well. You can also get three of these or four of them at 1,000. Once again, depending on the price. But usually fresh veggies, you know, that is the price range, guys. I think now you do have an idea. And you do have here oranges. Three oranges are for 1,000 shillings. And then you do have a tin of onions. So onions, they are 10,000 shillings. And then the smaller one, this one right here, is 5,000 shillings, yeah. Let me know what you guys think so far, if you think the prices of food are friendly, but yeah, these are the prices in the market. Let me show you guys our watermelons and the prices. So depending on the price, the bigger price right here is 13,000 shillings. And then this smaller one here, 10,000 shillings. And then this one right here, 8,000 shillings. And then the pineapples is 4,000 shillings each. These are fresh pineapples. And then right here we do have pumpkins. So the biggest pumpkin is 10,000. And then you have 8,000 shillings and then 5,000 shillings. And then the cabbages range from here 3,000 shillings to 2,500 shillings. The size obviously is going to determine the price. And of course, if you come when you're buying very many things, then you can easily get a discount. Or you can easily get, or you can easily negotiate by the way. So guys, I know most people like bananas. We have two types of bananas in Uganda mainly. We have these ones. They are quite... Uh, uh, this is usually called the small size. They actually use this to make pancakes, maybe Ugandan pancakes. And then we have uh, these ones right here. These are my favorite. Eh? We also have this type here. They are too ripe. I wouldn't want to break them. They might break here. Yeah. By the price range, uh, the bigger ones, these are 8,000 shillings, 7,000 shillings, 6,000 shillings. So these ones are 4,000 shillings, 3,000 shillings. Yeah, so guys, you obviously need to try out Ugandan bananas when you come to visit Uganda. Leave a comment, guys. Let me know what you think so far. These are mangoes. Look at those. Uh, four of them go for 5,000 shillings. You can buy some of them are still green and some are yellow a little bit so you can buy take home and keep in the fridge <laughs> these purples are very very big very very big very very big guys so if you want to get very very nice food you have to come to a market like this one they also do have pumpkins a look at this so pretty much everything all kinds of food you have to come to the market you will get a variety everything is always in such a market they also have ginger this is ginger and all this goes for five thousand shillings uh, this is one kilogram this is tangerine it's almost like oranges but it's not oranges you get three of these at one thousand shillings i showed you matoke but we also have another type of bananas all these are bananas we we'll have the yellow bananas that's a different type of banana we have the matoke green banana for cooking but we also have plantain or gonja and i'm really a big fan of plantain so there is fresh plantain here in the market that you can buy so let me show you guys here this is plantain this is a different type of banana that they are so you can use this to make gonja crisps you can boil it and and eat it with food like the way we do the normal matoke you can use it in very many different ways so this one goes for 20,000 shillings. This is a big cluster, over 20 of them on one cluster. And then these smaller ones go for 8,000 shillings eh? because they are quite smaller. So yeah, I'll let me know if you guys have fresh plantain in your markets. I'll leave a comment. Have you guys even ever seen fresh plantain? I'll be sure to leave a comment and let me know. When you're cooking your food, you obviously need some spices as well. And I'm going to show you what they have in the market. So they do have this. This is called pilau masala. You can just put it in a mortar and grind it. So each is 1,000 shillings. And then we do have garlic. I really, really love this type of garlic. I always buy it. This is for 3,000 shillings. There are four pieces inside. And then this is cinnamon. You also have to grind this when you get at home. 
this is 1000 shillings and then this is powdered cinnamon so you have the option to buy either the one that is not powdered or you can buy the powdered one yes now that we saw the prices of fish as a protein i also want to show you the prices of meat because some people like fish other people like beef other people like goat's meat so let's go to a butcher and find out how much is a kilogram of meat I'm still showing you proteins guys and we also eat a lot of beans and peas in Uganda so uh, there is this young man who is selling at the market and they measure in cups so these are fresh beans eh? they measure them in cups guys so this cup goes for 3,000 shillings the price which has surprised me is the price of fresh cow peas but these are really fresh and they even remove them for you so you just go home prepare so this cup goes for 8,000 shillings, which is quite a lot. <laughs> 8,000 shillings is a lot, guys. That's like $2 for a cup of peas. That is a lot. That's expensive, yeah. But, uh, and then here we have trays of eggs. They are selling eggs as well. So you can come and buy uh, fresh eggs from the market. So a tray of eggs goes for 13,000 shillings. I think that's quite affordable. A tray of eggs has 30 eggs, so... 13,000 shillings for 30 eggs. I'll let you know what you guys think. I'm also going to show you the prices of apples and, uh, and oranges. So we have some apples here. And then we also have some oranges here. The apples, uh, 1,000 shillings for apple. And then the oranges, oranges are 2,000 shillings for an orange. These grapes are coming from South Africa, guys. 10,000 shillings for a pack guys we are going to enter a supermarket and i show you the prices of household items so a supermarket is good because you can get pretty much everything in one place so this particular area is is namgongo so let's go inside the supermarket and check out the prices of household items uh, so guys we are inside the supermarket and uh, uh, this is milk so this is the most popular one to buy just a uh, full liter will go for 3200 shillings but of course you can buy yogurt as well there are very many different items this is probiotic this has to be nice a blueberry at 5000 shillings 5400 so there is a variety that you can get i think i'm actually going to take this one this should be really nice when you come to a supermarket you have all your options for milk and and yogurts as well there is a lot that you can get uh, from the supermarket yes yeah, so uh, let me show you guys uh, the price of sugar if you take sugar so a kilogram of sugar is 4800 yeah but um can see the prices there and you can get cheese uh, you can get butter the different types of butter and cheese so there are very many options uh, this butter is really nice uh, by fresh dairy i've tried uh, this one before so you can actually use this butter as well so the advantage is when you come to the supermarket you can find everything in one place it's like a one-stop center so i'm also going to show you guys the prices of household items obviously drinking water is very important and um, so there is this 20 liter jerry can called a jibu this is what i always buy and it's just six thousand shillings so initially when you buy the price is high because you have to buy the empty but every time you return the empty bottle, you only pay 7,000 shillings and they give you 20 liters of drinking water. So if you don't like boiling tap water, personally, I don't like boiling tap water, these big bottles of water could really be a good option and they are quite affordable. So guys, you can also find fruits and vegetables in the supermarket and I'm going to show you their prices. These are eggplants, we saw those earlier. These are French beans, a kilogram of French beans at 5,000. Kilogram of eggplants at 4,000. So you can still find all this in the supermarket like what we saw earlier at the normal markets green peppers still as well 
the bell peppers as well a kilogram is 11,500 all these options are available you just have to I think it's preference <laughs> but if you're trying to save money and get a better deal then you obviously have to go to the normal market show you the prices of some household items just the basic ones like soap so here obviously you have I always buy this area it's good when you want to wash your clothes uh, it's 4,300 this is half a kilo and then you can also get a one kilogram at 15,000 yeah area between area and um, between Aerial and Magic, you can always buy like one of these kilograms, 7,500. This is washing powder, and then 500 grams at 3,800 for 500 grams. Obviously, uh, there is a variety of all kinds of soaps, guys, when you come to the supermarket. We have bowels as well. This is a salad bowel, 40,000. Have some plates. You can just come and pick from some of these 5,000 shillings for a soup bowel. So you can't fail to get something, guys. Household items, you can't fail to get something. I'm just giving you guys an idea. We have some a really nice 40,000, 15,000. All these are household items that you can just come and pick something in here. Guys, so now I think you have an idea about accommodation, about food, about household items. So let me talk to you guys a little bit about a transport. So you can either use Uber, there is Uber in Kampala, or you can use safe border, or you can use a regular border, or you can use a taxi. Also what people may call a matter. So right now I'm going to show you guys how to use a safe border because it's, it has its advantages. One, uh, one of them is that it has an app so the prices are determined within an app so no one is going to like scam you and tell you to pay like an exaggerated price. So I'm going to show you guys how to get a safe border. Obviously you have to start by downloading the app. Whether you have Apple phone or Android it all works uh, just the same. So I'm going to show you guys but uh, you just type in safe border and you should be able to download the app. So. You can see I have safe border, they're telling me to update. I don't want to update it now. But that's how the app looks like. It's the safe border app, you just open it. So you can just open it and uh, so there is order for a car, order for safe car, order safe border, pay bills, deliver package, airtime and data. So I'll just click on order for a safe border. And then you, you enter in your destination like where you're going. So I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to Shumuk House in the city center. So this is where I'm going, Shumuk House. It's in the city center. So it will automatically access your location. So that's why I am. I'll just click on confirm pickup. And then it will automatically calculate how much you're going to pay. So you can see it's between 10,000 shillings and 12,000 shillings. So once I do that, then I'll click on order. I'll place an order and then to we'll start searching for the safe order. So you can see now I have someone called Haruna. Haruna is on the way so the app will keep showing you where you are this is where I'm standing right here on the main road and then actually the guy has already started to call me so hello Sebo hello and you are not quality for main road quality supermarket Kumain main road quality supermarket uh, oh, look opposite. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm going to So, guys, just like that, uh, the guy has already called me. So, I'm going to go and sit on the border. 
but what you have to note is once they once the app gives you the safe border the safe border guy has a number so this is sb24240 so i have to first make sure that this number is the same exact one that i'm going to sit on so you have to note the safe border number so that's why they call it safe border because you know who has taken you you know their number meaning you have their details in case anything goes wrong then you can go within the safe border app sorry safe border company they have a company and they know the details of the rider who took you so uh, these are the guys are right here there are two guys but i'm, I'm sure this is the one so yes so once i've confirmed the number then i can just sit on the border and <laughs> and you'll start the trip I've arrived and with safe border it shows you how much you've used on the trip so you can see here 12,000 shillings so that's what I have to pay him I'm going to end the video here I'm still around Kampala I'm just walking around to get some things from town uh, there is a lot of traffic it's almost at 7 p.m. but I'm going to end the video here uh, leave your comments what you think about the cost of living in Kampala if you have any questions I leave them in the comment section as well and uh, I'll try to answer as much as I can uh, subscribe like share and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye